My name is Genaro Rios Mugenburg, as the professor said. I work for ProMexico, that's the trade and invest agency for the Mexican government. I'm in charge of the Berlin office. The main, let's say, the European uh, headquarters in Frankfurt, or Eastern, Central and Eastern Europe is in Frankfurt, and I take the, the Berlin office. I study international relations in Mexico City, born and raised in Mexico City, study international relations. And uh, after that, I came to Germany for making a master's also in international relations at the University of Dresden. Uh, I've been uh, in a kind of a, my professional career. I started as an intercultural consultant for companies. After that, I went to the private sector. I stayed in the private sector as international sales manager for a company in Freiburg. And one year ago, I got this call from, from ProMexico. Um, any questions about what ProMexico is and everything, we will, we'll answer them gladly after I finish. Um, if I speak too fast or too slow or too low or too high, just let me know and I'll try to pass it on. Um, so uh, my topic is creative industries in Latin America. That's one of the uh, agenda parts and uh, I'm going to talk about Spanish, uh, about Mexico. Uh, Mexico has the matrix of the Spanish-speaking digital wave. Um, it's going to be, uh, first of all, I'm going to talk about the CI in Latin America just briefly. I'm not going to give uh, facts and figures. I'm going to give information. We don't have here kind of a lots of economists, I think. So I'm going to go to just basic information, and then I'm going to go back to Mexico, the Mexico advantage. Why Mexico? Uh, filmmaking, industry tailored, uh, incentives, talent, Spanish speaking market, video games, and our uh, digital, uh, digital creative city that we're right now starting to run in Mexico, which is going to be the, the largest in, in the Americas, or at least in Latin America. I'm going to talk about some success stories in, uh, in basically in the um, filmmaking industry. And at the end, some just the final comments. So the CI in Latin America. So uh, in a certain way, the, the recent emergence of the creative industries as a distinct area of interest for economists, statisticians, cultural specialists, and public policy makers reflects a growing awareness extremely of their economic potential and their role in fostering cultural diversity through the market. Uh, the concept of creative industries for the purpose of public policy making remains very young and not for not all governments are convinced of the need to address this sector with targeted initiatives. With the advent of new technologies in the last 20 years such as the internet, uh, e-commerce, electronic files that make sharing, trading and consuming uh, cultural goods and services easier than even before, globalization has had a profound impact on the creative industries. Latin America is probably, if not for sure, the world's most active and dynamic region in studying this area of potential economic growth nowadays. Um, the Convenio Andres Bello in uh, Latin America is a regional institution based in Bogota in Colombia, devoted to the promotion of culture, who, uh, which has published a number of pioneering studies on the economic dimensions of cultural industries in the whole region of Latin America. Under this program for economy and culture, it has collaborated with 13 member countries. These countries are Bolivia, Chile, Colombia, Cuba, Ecuador, España, Mexico, Panama, Paraguay, Peru, uh, uh, Republica Dominicana, Venezuela, and Argentina is still in the process of getting in. So these 13 member countries, in order to improve their systems of economic information for culture. So as we can see, this really Latin America is trying to get together to expand this new sector. Um, statistical methodologies which are so important to provide officials with information they need to develop suitable policy to support the creative industries have yet to catch up with this reality. In order to harness the opportunities offered by the creative industries, governments first need to undertake thorough mapping and statistical research, very important, to better understand uh, these new, this new industries. The need for specialized content that 
better uh, caters to the Spanish-speaking market, along, of course, with uh, the search for strategic partners for global media companies based primarily in Europe and North America, has promoted an increased interest in the region, whole region, Latin America. Due to Mexico's known talent across the, um, across the border, as well as the very competitive costs that we have, international quality standards, infrastructure, natural wonders, renowned hospitality, great, market, great local market, and proximity to local, to key international markets and generous incentives, the country has become the clear production destination of choice. As you can see, I'm going to concentrate right now, from now on, I'm going to talk about Mexico and the, the advantages about Mexico. At last, uh, Latin America is one of the world's fastest growing media markets. And uh, Mexico is, le is leading the digital, the, the digital audiovisual production revitalization in the region. Mexico's creative industries are transforming their business and production of new technologies and the new customer trends. That's a very important point. A wide range that comprises cinema, TV production, digital animation, special effects, video game, and multimedia development. In this case, the national media landscape has experienced a very rapid growth in, recent year, in, in, in the last recent years. Uh, this places the country at the forefront of the digital culture and entertainment revolution in the world. In the, the, the best thing of all, it's in our own language, Spanish, and making Mexico the matrix of the Spanish-speaking digital wave. Uh, the next point I'm going to talk about is the, the Mexico advantage. Why Mexico? What, what, has, what has Mexico? Why is everybody going to Mexico nowadays? I'm going to start with a video. Um, I'm going to put the volume up. It's just kind of music, but it's just two minutes so that you can take a look about what's going on right now. So that's a small introduction about what, what Mexico has to offer. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this uh, right now. Let's start with it from the very beginning, the filmmaking and audiovisual production platform. Um, Mexico has been the production destination of choice of many studios that have produced films now regarded as classics. That's uh, not everyone can say that. It's one of the most competitive in the world in terms of the below the line production and labor costs. That's one of the most important things that the why Mexico we're talking about the labor costs are right now one of the biggest issues we have to offer. Uh, that allows filmmakers to dream big, really big, and build spectacular and impressive sets, making the most imaginative production uh, designs a reality. Uh, master filmmakers have found the best production support from Mexican industry workers um, and artists, creating future and fantasy worlds for such blockbusters and classic cinema as some of the most known as is Dune, Total Recall, 100% in Mexico. And right now it's coming, right now in the movie theaters, Elysium was also 100% filmed in Mexico. Um, or recreating a distant past, for example, Frida, The Wild Bunch, Butch Cassidy, Master and Commander was also filmed in Mexico. Uh, Pearl Harbor or Titanic, who were completely, uh, how do you call it, completely, thank you very much, in, 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 in Mexico. Or in a certain way also transforming Mexico into another country making it look like Santiago in Chile in Missing, or like Cali, Colombia in Colombiana, or uh, also Salamanca, Spain in Vintage Point. Mexico is, a very, is also very advanced in developing, in developing digital media expertise. A new generation of young, of young Mexican visual effects professionals with digital, with digital imaging technician, there was a so-called DIT certification in the production of digital imagining, for state-of-art video game development, multi-texture 3D animation, multime multimedia, and new, new media production. And lots of several post-production service houses are becoming part of the Hollywood-approved international quality and security certified group of internationals. Uh, these VFX companies uh, are outsourced by the major studios to generate digital realities from set creation to set extensions to digital animatic and among other visual effects wonders for, for example, Zodiac, the social network, the case of Benjamin Button, who was the special effects were made by a, by a Mexican company. 
uh, let me in, Pirates of the Caribbean, that even the music was made also in Mexico, they were from, from Mexicans, some, but not everything, but some of the, of the music from the film was made from Mexicans. Uh, on, on Stranger Tides, and also in uh, visual effects, Tron Legacy. Uh, in this case, Mexico goes beyond filmmaking. Its artificial and interactive industry is committed to the, to the development of intellectual property for the digital screen on diverse platforms. Its creative industries are transforming their business and production models and evolving with the advent of new technologies and also new consumer trends. We are building an ideal business and industrial environment for media production through global competitive incentives and industry support programs. Uh, in this case, Mexico is strategically, lo strategically located, neighboring the most important market in the world and gateway to the Latin American Pacific markets. Business culture, affinity, integral government support platforms, quality of life, industry tailored incentives, and highly competitive costs are just some of lots of the of many elements that we have that total the Mexico advantage. According to KPMG competitive alternatives in 2010, as you can see that, uh, Mexico offers the greatest cost advantages for the development of software, video games, web, and multimedia among 102 countries. It's kind of a, we have a good place. KPMG's report considers all competitiveness variables, logistics, labor, and transportation costs, as well as net sales, among other important factors. So as you can see, the, the Mexican entertainment and media markets has been really booming in the last years. So it's not just that, I just mentioned also that it's going to be uh, industry tailored incentives. Which are these incentives? Um, Mexico offers attractive industry tailored incentive schemes benchmarked against the world's most aggressive competitors and created to prompt grand scale international productions in Mexico. Its incentives, in this case for film, Pro Audiovisual Fund, FCINE and FIDECINE, are designed to boost local and foreign film and audiovisual productions. In this case, their scope goes beyond filmmaking in order to stimulate investment in digital R&D and IT development with specific applications in video games, interactive animation, and new media. There is a support program also from the government uh, for the high impact film and audiovisual industry that offers an incentive up to 17.5% of applicable expenses incurred in Mexico, which consists of a cash, ref uh, cash refund applied uh, on all verifiable production related expenses. And not only that, also the return of the VAT or the VAT, the taxes uh, dispersed from those expenses. Additionally, the program spurred the creation of the film and audiovisual industry government service platform, which contemplates a scheme of integral attention to film and audiovisual high impact productions to offer them, in this case, the best shooting experience in our country. An industry, an industry information web resource called Film Friendly Mexico has been created to attract foreign artificial productions and service production companies from all over the world. In addition to these funds, Mexico also offers schemes like ProSoft for IT, uh, Mexico First for video games, and CONACYT, that's the National Council of Science and Technology. Uh, these innovation funds, among other economic incentives, are to support important investment required, required for equipment, licensing, training, R&D for audiovisual enterprises and projects, focusing on all what's to do with digital media, digital media production. Now, the point is, we have all these, where we, where, with whom do we use this, these incentives? That we've got the talent. What does Mexico has to offer as talent uh, for, for its people? Beyond the infrastructure uh, and financial advantages, Mexico offers a wealth of talent with a multidisciplinary population trying to become key players in the digital production spectrum, from software, software developers to visual effects from multimedia specialists servicing domestic and international companies. We have to check that out that Mexico has around 120, 110, 120 million people, and uh, almost half of it are less than 27. And uh, average, the age average in Mexico is 26 years old, if I'm not wrong. 
So we have kind of a lot of talent to offer right now. According this point to the uh, ANUYES, that's the National University Association in Mexico, uh, close to 125,000 students will graduate each year from animation, digital design, filmmaking, virtual media communication, image and sound design, interactive design and digital engineering careers. Uh, Mexico is the ninth IT talent hub in the world and the most important tech talent pool in the Americas. Furthermore, Mexico is developing a new specialized academic program for media and interactive industries. There are more than 900 postgraduate programs related to engineering and technology around the country in Mexican universities. So we've got the talent also. <laughs> Told you I'm going to talk about good about Mexico. Uh, another advantage that we have, and it's not just Mexico, it's whole Latin America and the, let's say the Spanish-speaking world, that's the, that's the language, Spanish. Mexico is one of the most important consumer markets and the gateway to the highest growing markets in the world, as I just said it. According to, according to several analysis, let's, talk, let's go a little bit deeper, uh, Mexico exported um, 6.17 billion US dollars worth creative goods and services in 2008 and it's the largest export in Latin America, followed by Brazil with 1.2 billion during the same year. In fact, in this case, Mexico exports more than Latin America and the Caribbean combined in this sector. Uh, over 1 billion people around the world in more than 10 languages are watching Mexico's audiovisual contents, basically in Asia and um, Eastern Europe countries. Um, Mexico, as I, as I said, is the largest film market in Latin America with 190 million tickets sold during, the, during the 2010 and the second largest of the Americas just after the US. So we, we like to go to the movies. In 2010, the media and entertainment sector in Mexico registered close to $18 billion in sales. That sector includes advertising, free-to-air broadcast television, pay TV, marketing and cinema. At the close of 2011, Mexico's box office revenues reached 9.6 billion pesos. That's kind of a 1,000 billion dollars. In a certain way, it's 7.8% 7, 7 more as, the, as 2010. So it, it, it grew 8%, almost 8% in one year. The Spanish-speaking population is a segment with continuous and rapid growth worldwide. We, everybody knows that. Uh, this trend is especially evident and swift in the US. Mexico is not only a prime market for entertainment products, but it's also an ideal platform to create Spanish language content. The country not only serves as a test market, but also as a development center for products geared for increasingly important and influential Spanish speaking market. Um, if um, it's a Disney film goes to Latin America, we're here in Germany in this case, everything is doubled in Germany, dubbed in Germany, and um, if uh, in Spain you have, when well, people in Spain have their own dubbing people, if the film goes, is stopped for Latin America, it's usually being dubbed in Mexico. Of course we have different accents and different people who are working on it, but the whole thing is usually done in, in Mexico. Uh, this segment, the, uh, the, the Spanish-speaking people comprises a huge community that shares products, services, and cultures, and culture, Spanish-speaking world, and supplies business and institutions with a truly unique growth opportunity. According to Richard Esteves from CSN Intelligence for Global Business, I will mention some key facts that he talked, told about the, the Mexican, uh, the, the Spanish-speaking world. Spanish is the official language in 21 countries and it's the third most spoken language in the world after English and Mandarin. More than 150 million people speak Spanish worldwide. Uh, experts predict that by the year 2050 there will be 530 million Spanish speaking people in the world, uh, of which 100 million will live in the US. Yeah, it's funny, but it's so. It's funny going to the United States um, 
of course, to California, Texas, uh, Arizona, and just working on the street and seeing a store and try to get in, and you say, instead of, it's kind of a weird that you want to get in and you see a shield on the door which says, we also speak, spe we also speak English. <laughs> so it's, it, it's, it's happening. We say that Mexico has, the United States took a lot from a lot of Mexican territory, but we're taking it back slowly. We were, <laughs> we're making it. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the demand for, as we go on, the demand for quality Spanish content throughout the U.S. has been fueled, in part, uh, by the Hispanic media market explosion, led by television advertising at a national and a network level which has seen growth of nearly 74% in the last five years. Um, so, go on and learn Spanish, won't be bad. <laughs> um, let's go to the next point, that's uh, the next sector is video games. The Mexican market for video games is the largest in Latin America, and the country moved forward to consolidating an industry with creations of its own. The challenge is to actively integrate Mexico to one of the most buoyant industries in our times, which foresees sales of $45 billion during the course of the next two years, till 2015. Uh, Mexico made its incursion into game development in the late 90s. It's not that's kind of a, it's new in a certain way, with three main companies working on different games, uh, game sectors. Uh, much has evolved since then, Sorry, the games industry has been changing worldwide, absolutely. And the local industry has been growing exponentially to the almost 30 studios we are today and we have today in Mexico. With the new studios bringing by a rate of 70% of the total companies every year. So that means that uh, it's not growing 17% every year from the beginning. From every year, we have 20. From this 20 next year, it's 17% more. And from the 20-something, then add another 17, it's really expanding really fast. Um, currently, there are four main hubs in, uh, in the country where game development has grown strongly due to its uh, strategical geographical location or the local government support. These main hubs are in Baja California Norte, that's the northern part of Mexico, Mexico City, Nuevo León, also in the north, and Jalisco in the center. Since 2004, the Mexican Ministry of Economy has opened diverse programs to support the local software and interactive industry with the main objective of promoting the growth of the local companies, the creation of more and better employments, the capacitation to be more competitive according to the global standards, as well as to maximize the local industry's potential. There are more than 32 universities nowadays in Mexico uh, along the country, which offer a degree related to game development, talking about digital arts, computer science, etc., et producing nearly 110,000 engineers per year and expected to produce 480 to 500 digital artists by the end of 2013 this year. In this case, the growth of Mexican game market has become a key factor to success of the game development companies in the country. This is due to the broad access of all the marketing channels that have emerged in the, recent year, in the recent years that has permitted the bloom of the local game development and publishing industry compared to other countries in Latin America. It will also be interesting to mention that uh, as a consumer uh, market, Mexico is the, has the first place in consumer market in video games, legally. Yeah, because we know that you can find many games all over the place, but legally it's even uh, the consumer market is even bigger than in the United States. So we also like to play. <laughs> but what about getting all these things together? That brings us to the next point. That's the creation of a, a digital creative city. Uh, what it's, what it's uh, the, the core of, this, uh, of the presentation to, in a certain way, give it to know it, the CCD. Ciudad Creativa Digital, uh, that will be the home of the Spanish digital wave. Digital wave. Um, nowadays, this government policy has specially identified the creative industries in Mexico as a focus for growth, encouraging the development of creative cluster model, which concentrates or wants to concentrate talent, skills, 
learning, employment, and of course the facilities to bring all this together. That encourages collaboration and cooperation between experts and peers, complementary activities, and in doing so, it facilitates, it facilitates the exchange of knowledge and ideas. This is the rationale behind the creation of world-class media production. This hub, which is to be built, it's being built in Guadalajara, which will be known as, as I said, Ciudad Creativa Digital, the digital creative city. This urban development, which will be created on the guidance of MIT, the MIT is going to be kind of a, the, the godfather of this media lab, and a different multidisciplinary group of Mexican specialists, will be the largest purpose-built media community in Mexico and in Latin America, and the largest Spanish content production center in the world. In addition to these, uh, the, to state the state of the art studios, DCC, Ciudad Creativa Digital, will have an unparalleled communication structure which will increase Mexico's presence and influence in media content production all over the world. Uh, DCC is a digital media node that will be developed in several phases. We are in phase number two right now. Uh, and it's projected to have a population of 50,000 inhabitants including media industries and information technology professionals and diverse global media corporations. So it's, it's not just software, it's not just IT, it's video games, it's software development, it's film industry, it's all creative industries which are going to be held together under one roof. Um, pairing futurist and historic Mexican architecture, the building, this building, uh, this would be an environment for the edge of knowledge and ideas. Kind of a doing speaking well, it would be a, a, an ideal urban environment to invest in, to live, to create, to learn, to enjoy, to discover, and to develop the shape of the future in culture and entertainment, not just for Mexico, but for whole Latin America. Uh, it will be the home to one of the largest, as I said, tech hubs in the Spanish-speaking world. It will set a new standard of economic and environmental sustainability, sustainability, sust sorry, sustainability um, coupled with a maximum efficiency resources where the creative community will unite minds and forces to generate the Spanish digital wave. I'm talking about in here that it uh, would be the greatest, the largest, the biggest high-tech hub in, the, in, in Latin America for the whole region. We cannot compare it with, uh, with the United States because they have lots of it. But talking about Latin America and the importance for Latin America and the region to have some of these the first Spanish-speaking hub that will get in, will, will be home for the whole region. It's, uh, we're really proud of it. And we have really, the government is really giving everything to bring it into, into fact. Um, so I told you I got some success stories, basically, in the uh, cinema and audiovisual uh, sector. We know that uh, some films produced in Mexico have been acknowledged in international critics. Everybody knows Amores Bueno. Most of us should know Amores Perros, uh, directed by Alejandro González Iñárritu. It's, it's a Mexican. And he was Oscar nominated for Best Foreign Language Film. It won uh, 34 international awards outside of Mexico. And uh, also him, Alejandro González Iñárritu, Babel was also nominated for an Oscar, and Beautiful also also nominated for an, for an Oscar. Till now, unfortunately, just nominations. But um, on, the other, on, the, on the other side, we got the, as I, as I mentioned before, the curse case of Benjamin Button. It received an Oscar for visual effects, and it was a Mexican company, Eugene Studios. Uh, which was founded in 1996. That means that less than 20 years later, they managed to get an Oscar. So respect for them. Also Guillermo del Toro, he's very famous also for many films. Uh, Pan Labyrinth was nominated for an Oscar for Best Foreign Film. And this film did receive three Oscars. Cinematography, because of Guillermo del Toro. And there were three Mexicans who got the three Oscars for which this film was nominated. And uh, last but not but least, Mexico has won two times Best Direction the last two years in Cannes. 
for the best direction. So it's uh, the talent right now is really, it's, it's a comeback from the Mexican talent. We lost it in the 70s. In the 50s, there were also many films and many cultural stuff being done in Mexico. Uh, everybody wanted to go to Mexico. Everyone in Hollywood had a house in Acapulco. Everybody was going to Acapulco. Uh, nowadays, everything stopped in the 70s. And nowadays, everybody's coming back. We know that uh, if you want to find a Hollywood star, you have to go to Los Cabos. And you will find them. Cabo, Los Cabos is in Baja California, and that's Mexico. And then you will see Jennifer Aniston, and well, she just said it recently that Mexico is the best place to go for vacation. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, uh, at the end, uh, I just want to say that uh, the Spanish language, well, that's, why, that's why we're talking about Latin America now, uh, it's warm, it's human, it's relevant, it's entertaining, it's increasingly popular at a global level. Uh, in this case, Mexico is the content generation leader. Mexican TV productions are viewed by more than 1 billion viewers in over 100 countries all around the world. Uh, Mexican films are rapidly regaining recognition in the world's most prestigious festivals. Mexican companies are realizing their video games on the latest plat platforms, and our special effects are creating movie magic effects for Hollywood studio productions. Uh, media industries have been recognized by the Mexican government as strategic for the economic uh, development of the country. We're really working for them. The government is fully committed to boosting the growth of the industrial sector and has further increased its support in the form of financial incentives, government development programs, specialized service platforms, and talent generation. As you can uh, see in here, uh, Mexico is at the forefront of the digital culture and the demand revolution. We are, in, we are in a leading position in the region. So uh, I can just say Mexico is waiting for you you got the talent, you got the language, you got the, you got what you need in Mexico. So thank you very much. Muchísimas gracias.